more and more we're being asked uh, to modify and prepare for track use the E36 M3, both in its 3 litre form, like this GT, and the 3.2 Evo. The car, I think people are recognising now, is such a fantastic base uh, for track day use. Plenty of power, rear wheel drive, limited slip diff, uh, and old fashioned, none of the sophisticated traction controls that can take a lot of the enjoyment out of these cars. I think the other thing to stress is usability, practicality, and also running costs. You know, you can build a very, 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 very effective track day weapon for not huge money, but also not have to then spend a fortune maintaining it afterwards. They're very, very usable. Well, we've known Simon for years and years and years, and he already owned this rather fantastic M3 GT, which is one of the 50 British racing green ones made for the UK. So the most important thing from the start was to absolutely ensure that this GT wasn't damaged in any way. Obviously, being this rare, it was essential to ensure that the car could be put back to its lovely road car condition, and that nothing you know, would be messed up or detrimental to uh, the car long term. So we've been sympathetic. But I suppose if we start with uh, suspension, the car was rebushed uh, with uh, poly bushes where required, and then obviously a coil over adjustable suspension kit front and rear. The idea of, of that is we could uh, then choose our own spring brakes to suit Simon because we wanted to keep the car usable and drivable, but primarily this was built for the Nurburgring, where you do want to keep the car quite supple. So carefully selected spring brakes to ensure that the car was usable there and of course driving it to and from the circuit. Then there's lovely great big front AP brakes, um, which are superb. I mean, they give the car incredible stopping power. Uh, rather than mess about with expensive engine tuning work, what we decided to do on this was shorten the diff ratio. So uh, we built a 3.64 to one uh, final drive. Um, the Americans have a great saying, poor man's supercharger, and I've always thought it's incredibly accurate. Uh, just gives that car that much more punch. But again, it's not too short a ratio. It's a ratio that is still usable uh, on the road. So you can drive it on the motorway without sitting at 6,000 RPM and ending up with tinnitus. So once the mechanical work was finished on the car, obviously for Simon's safety, and to give it a slightly better feel, a more secure feel on the racetrack, um, we fitted this safety devices, six point roll cage with rear crossover, double diagonal and harness bars in. We then fitted these superb Recaro seats to the front, passenger side as well, we do care about the passenger. Um, and then with black Schroth three inch harnesses. Um, short shift was fitted, uh, carefully selected so it didn't make the gear change too notchy. And then this nice OMP, uh, slightly smaller diameter, 330mm diameter suede, uh, steering wheel. Um, again, the idea of this was to make a nice environment, not an unpleasant one. So the rear seats were left in, the door cards, etc. It had to be nice and drivable and usable on the road so it could be driven to Spa and to Nürburgring. The important thing is obviously to get the right car in the first place and this example here, the G, this GT, uh, was, was the perfect thing to start with, without any corrosion, without any of the bodywork problems at some E36s. So choose your car carefully and then you really will end up with a, a, a great fun but, but practical hooligans track day car that can be driven to and from the circuit. We here at Classic Heroes were being asked more and more to carry out this sort of work but to all different sorts of level. So Classic Heroes can prepare you a, a, a very mildly modified E36 M3 that you can still drive to the office through to the rather more focused example like this GT of Simon's.